Hi, good morning. I'm Zhang Wen from the Urban Redevelopment Authority. Thank you, Esri, for inviting us to share this morning. The title of my presentation is Powering Data-Informed Decisions Through Spatial Collaborative Tools. The Urban Redevelopment Authority is Singapore's National Land Use Planning Authority with the mission to make Singapore a great city to live, work, and play. As planners, like all cities, we have to ensure there is sufficient land for our housing, amenities, recreation for our people, enough space for our economy, for commerce and industrial activities. However, unlike other cities, as a city and a state, we have to ensure there is sufficient land for our global connections, like our port, our airport, our anchorages, for our defence, as well as basic utility needs, like our water catchment and energy plants. This requires us to strike a good balance between our economic, social and environmental needs in a manner that optimizes the limited land and sea space that we have. Looking ahead, with the rise of disruptive technologies, with many more uncertainties and effects of climate change, we also need to better incorporate greater flexibility and resilience in the way we plan. In URA's digital transformation journey over the last several years, we have focused on three key trusts. First, we want to be more data informed and productive in the way we plan. This requires us to provide good access of data for our planners and enable our planners to be able to make sense of the data in the day-to-day -day planning decisions that we make. Secondly, planning in Singapore doesn't just involve URA, but many parts of the government. And we want to work together in a more integrated whole of government planning manner. This requires us to collaborate with different stakeholders to build up new capabilities together and redesign the way we plan. As a regulatory agency, we also constantly look at how can we support the industry to be more productive and identify opportunities to create value together. This requires us to look at how we continuously improve the services we provide and also develop shared insights together where possible. One of our key strategies is the development in-house of a suite of digital planning tools to transform our internal and cross-agency processes. This includes ePlanner, which is a one-stop geospatial application which our planners use to find many different layers of planning information, and this is also used by many partners across uh, the government agencies. It is a tool that our planners use day to day, and many have said that you know, they cannot imagine a different way of finding information. We have also developed other tools like Gemma and Urban System Dashboards, which supports our workflows in tracking the implementation of infrastructure projects, as well as mapping new and future land use scenarios internally and across with our agency partners. From our journey in the last few years, we have also uh, started to streamline the Gemma and Usys platform into the new one tool, which we released early this year. This brings together our upstream planning as well as our infrastructure implementation stages into an integrated platform. This is a user-centric platform that also allows us to reduce the maintenance and development costs for such an application. Let me go into the one tool uh, in a more detailed manner. There are four key building blocks to one tool. First, it is a collaboration and integration platform, bringing together multiple agencies multiple users together to collaborate, to share information, and indirectly also reduce the development costs if each of us were to do this separately. Secondly, it is user-centric. We bring stakeholders together to design, to, to drive the development, and together coordinate our resource allocation as well as identify potential synergies across different features and requirements. Thirdly, we continue with an agile development approach in an iteratively identifying requirements, design, uh, test, build, deploy, and adopt this rapid prototyping approach uh, to drive the development of new features. Fourthly, we also focus on mass customization. This requires us to design our components to be modular, to be consistent, to be reusable, and put in place a development process that is replicable and scalable. Let me go into the building blocks in more detail, starting with collaboration and integration. As mentioned, one tool supports an interagency consultation across multiple land users, where we facilitate the coordination of development and infrastructure plan, as well as the identification of opportunities for co-location and integration. 
by having the different layers in one single platform, having the different land users that we can have a complete glance of, it also allows our planners to map out what are the dependencies across different infrastructure projects, allowing us to better identify the interdependencies, which helps us to understand the implications when there are any changes in infrastructure schedules. We focus on user centricity with a core OpsTech team that works with planners managing different workflows to identify not just the requirements across the different work streams, but also having a core team that looks at the synergies across the different requirements, coordinate our timing and resource allocation so that we can achieve a better outcome in a more efficient manner. We continue with the spirit of continuous improvement and continuous development with an agile approach, with the teams identifying what are the requirements, designing, testing, deploying, and learning from past experiences to inform our next sprint. Mass customization is something we've placed a lot of emphasis on for one tool, and we achieve this, as I mentioned, by having different modules, such as the key fields module, the comparison module, the consultation modules, and by stacking these different modules together in a different manner to support different kinds of requirements. This allows us to achieve that consistency in user experience and yet at the same time have the flexibility to cater for different types of workflows. From our experience and capabilities built up in developing our digital planning tools, we have also extended to support the COVID-19 efforts. The Space Out application is one of our key initiatives this year to provide the public with information on crowd levels in malls, in supermarkets, in post office and markets across Singapore. This would not have been possible without the support from many partners from the private sector as well as government agencies. Uh, we are glad that the public has found it useful and we received many positive feedback and we hope to continue to provide uh, a useful solution uh, as we continue in this COVID-19 period. As you may recall, uh, we started with the safe distancing measures in place in late March and malls were required to control the crowd levels and manage the maximum number of people within. Many malls were finding it challenging to manage the crowds and people were also experiencing long queues when they turned up at the mall's entrances. We observed that malls were counting the number of people entering to ensure that they could adhere to the safe measurement guidelines. However, the information was not readily available to the public to inform their decisions uh, before they head out or before they arrive at the malls. What Space Out seeks to achieve is to connect people with the latest and most recent trends of the crowd levels at the different malls, enabling people to make more informed choices and decisions on where to go, when to go. We hope to also facilitate a more even crowd distribution across the malls and hopefully relieve some of the pressures the malls are facing in managing the crowds that had already appeared at their doorsteps. At the beginning, we started partnering with the large retail malls uh, where we realized that different malls were having different approaches to do counting or were using different technologies. We had to understand their operations and design a practical and safe approach for them to participate and to send to us their crowd level information. We also had to address the concerns that different malls have on how the information will be stored, how the information will be presented, and we involved the malls in reviewing the site prior to launch. Uh, we are glad that uh, many other malls have participated following the initial launch. And we have also seen other partners such as the supermarkets, the post office, the markets, the stadiums, and most recently with Sentosa coming on board. The design concept we've adopted for Space Up is for it to be easy to use, flexible and scalable. Therefore, we designed it to be a web map application, which is accessible from any device as long as it has a browser, and there is no need for any installation. We intended for the information to be visible at one glance, where you can easily find out what is the crowd level at different outlets from a map. We designed it to be modular so that we are able to incorporate more outlets and more activity types progressively in a very seamless way. With the feedback we have gathered from the public, we also continue to enhance, such as the map symbols, to allow users who have color blindness to be able to see the information more easily. And we also work with our partners to incorporate more information, such as the opening hours for the post office 
as well as the queue lengths for the markets. We also saw value to incorporate some analytics, such as the nearby less crowded option feature, where users are able to find where are the alternatives that are crowd less crowded or not crowded, and how far they are from each other, and also incorporate multi-language features so that it supports different communities. In early August, we partnered with Sentosa for the release of a district layer where you are able to see the crowd level across Sentosa, different type of locations. To achieve this, we also added new symbols so that it's easy for users to know what is the nature of different locations and added new information such as uh, the parking lot availability. For some of you who have not visited SpaceOut before, uh, let me give you a quick demo. You can visit SpaceOut by going spaceout.gov.sg and where we are now is on the mall layer where by clicking on a particular mall, you are able to see what is the latest crowd level. You are able to see how the crowd level has varied across the week and different times of the day. You can switch to a different layer, in this case, supermarkets, where we have partnered NTUC, Singsiong, and Prime. And you can search for the outlets uh, from the name and or the address, and similarly, find out what's the latest crowd level and how has it changed across different times of the week. Uh, we uh, also partnered with Singpost, and this is a layer where you can find out for each post office what is similarly the latest crowd level, but also information about the operating hours. Uh, we work very closely with Singpost to ensure that this information are kept updated as a situation change over uh, the, the last couple of months. We partner with Sports Singapore to incorporate crowd levels for the stadiums, and you can easily see which are the stadiums that are more crowded, uh, and similarly which are the times of the day that they are less, and there are also uh, near the nearby options where you can find some of these alternatives and how far they are. As mentioned in early August, we partnered with Sentosa. This is the layer for the whole district of Sentosa where you can see a variety of locations. Uh, and this is, for example, the cable car station uh, where you can see the crowd levels. You can see at the beaches such as uh, the Palawan Beach, uh, what is the crowd levels at different times of the day. And also the car park situation, where you can see not just the crowd levels, but how many car park lots are available, as well as the operating hours. Reflecting on your race digitalization journey in having digital planning tools, as well as what I've mentioned earlier, one, two, and the space out experience, we have drawn certain lessons. Uh, first, in harnessing data and technology, it is useful to be able to bridge the information gaps to help people make more informed choices. Secondly, when data is fragmented, it is useful to be able to bridge that and to provide and bring together a common unified picture. However, when we need to work with different stakeholders, we need to also understand and work towards aligning our interests and have applications that demonstrate the feasibility and value of these solutions. To create a delightful user experience, we need to prioritize our efforts in understanding the user journey, in gathering the user requirements to create a solution that better cater to the needs of our users. And an integrated design and development process allows us to incorporate different improvements and feedback more readily and fast, and allows the product to continuously improve. It is also beneficial to foster a community of users with a good appreciation of the technical considerations to serve as a bridge between other users and the development team. From this journey, we have been able to harness the use of data and technology to improve the way we plan and to plan for a more resilient city. In our effort to build a stronger Singapore together, in our mission to make Singapore a great city to live, work and play. Thank you.